This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Good to see you. Here we are, talk of Asian marketing. Here we are again, and uh, we're well. We seem to have a lot of stuff on food recently. Food's uh, a biggie. Food's a big one in Chinese culture, of course. Can never get away from food. You really can't. In fact, I was just in Carrefour the other day. Yeah. And they've even got snacks as you're going round. You get in store <laughs> yeah, a place yeah, where yeah. you can pick up a snack. So yeah. I mean, it's such a big thing here, isn't it? When you Thinking about food, it's when in the retailing situation. It's just can't get away from spread it. out. And the one that really kind of interest me recently is this idea of steak and, and I know you've been here a while and you think of steak as being kind of very American. Yeah, that's for sure. It's very much here. Very much and that's that's kind of an interesting twist you know. In Chinese cuisine steak does not play a big traditional role but that's kind of the interesting things. We'll have some shows later that look at some other points such as uh, KFC maybe. We've had our McDonald's show. Mm. A lot of foods that you would not think you know, you wouldn't think really fit in. In the end, somehow get worked in. You know, get it worked into the, into these kind of niches. You and know? of course, it doesn't naturally lend itself to Chinese uh, situation because you, you know you you're not going to pick up a whole steak with chopsticks. Uh, especially that, that's, that. You know, when you're thinking that you know quarter inch, you know, big Texas steak. You know, that just doesn't really fit fit much of an image. Not to mention you have the whole religious aspect of it. Yes. So a lot of people don't eat much meat, yeah. and then a lot of people will not eat beef meat at all. So this is a little bit problematic, right? But if we look back over the years in Taiwan, we can see China, Hong Kong, too. We can see that steak is there. And the funny thing is, the first time I saw steak in Taiwan was in the night market. Ah, yeah, for sure. We've That's got kind a, of a real got... interesting place to steer, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, we... <laughs> you're walking around and suddenly there's it's right steak. There. Right, right. And uh, you'll just have these little tables sitting out in the night market, which is true for all the noodle stands and everything. But right on the table is a wooden plate, a wooden board, with a wooden board basically, recessed yeah. with a mm. uh, metal plate in it, mm. and that metal plate comes right off the stove, mm. right from a hot fire, mm. it's sizzling, they have a steak right on there that's been cooked and put on there, and an egg frying, right mm. now frying, not even done yet, frying right now, and uh, what else, noodles. U- usually noodles, noodles. Are like <laughs> an underlying bed of noodles, I mean noodles, rice, noodles, right. it's got to be right. there. Right. right. So and that's pretty normal, noodles. the noodles. Mm. And a lot of times the noodles will get stuck to the plate. You got to peel them off because it's so hot. And that is kind of your typical introduction to steak in Taiwan. I think you can find this in Hong Kong. We've seen it in China also. I haven't seen it much in Singapore though, but I haven't I haven't looked around that much. Maybe it is there. But that's going back years ago. I think that was the only place you'd find them. That was kind of the only introduction you get. And people go to the night market, have that adventure, try something different. They'd be on the little table having their steak. Now it wasn't good steak. Mm. Now, I'm not a, I'm not an expert on steak, but I can say they weren't they weren't very tender. <laughs> no, they tend to be that real thin kind of almost right. a little bit more than minute steak, yeah, didn't exactly, they? Basically, exactly. And I mean, I, I guess it lends itself in a way to this situation because of the way it's cooked. Basically, it doesn't require that whole Western Easy. oven and right. so on. They just throw it on the stuff. fire, get it over with, and there's not a big issue there. Yeah, it's fast. So you never, you know, you, if you had been here 20 years ago, you would think this is not a market that's going to develop very much. Yeah. However, around though maybe 15 years ago, uh, Ponderosa came over. And there are other steakhouses, like in Taichung, there's a Chris's Steakhouse, which is a really high end. So you do have some really high end restaurants that come in. And then you have your more medium restaurants that come in and kind of educate the consumers, I think, about what steak is. I think there are other kinds of steakhouses we can see around Taiwan also. There are, sure. And I, I mean, when we think about the cooking of it, I think this is an interesting part just to reflect on for a moment or two, because, because it. Typically, you have that channel that you've talked about there, like the night market, a very sort of casual kind of place where you can go and eat something. Just out it's thrown open. on the fire, yeah. it's cooked, it's real fast. Often you get your sort of ketchup, your chili sauce, you eat it. It's pretty good, I have to say. I, you, know, you have to be pretty hungry for it to be that's right. really good. <laughs> Maybe I've been hungry each yeah, time. So. But it makes sense at the time. Then we go up kind of to somewhere where you get more of a restaurant situation. And I think there you tend to get those fatter steaks yeah. where they're a little bit more like the traditional 
Western US kind of steak, thick, juicy. Um, and there, it's interesting because they'll often ask you, how much do you want it cooked? Do you right. want it a how one you, how or do you a want ten it or a two or a three? Right. And my mother-in-law is real particular on really? that. Yeah, she how says, does she like her steak? I like it five. Five. Ufenso. Right. Ufenso. So that's like a medium rare. Medium rare. Right. So there should be a little bit of blood coming out of it. And quite often when we go and... I mean, I, I say quite often in terms of when we go. And she's there. She usually eyes the steak, cuts it open, has a look. And I'd say about 90% of the time, she rags straight onto the service staff and say, that's not five, that's six. <laughs> Too done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's unusual. And that's really... That's really unusual yeah, because most people want it way overdone. That's it, yes. Yeah. So she's very precise on that. Interesting. My, Where did she develop that habit from? Well, that, that was the point because my wife said, you know, I want to be, you know, take it easy a little bit. She said, I've been eating steak for like 20 years, mm. you know, even since you were a kid, you know, we used to go then. I know what a five is, I know what a six is, I know what a seven is. So very particular about What makes that. her like it so rare, though? That's really unusual. You know, mm-hmm. most people mm-hmm. are uh, chief and so at least. That's it. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why she likes the taste. I guess it's just a personal thing for her. And I guess that's why she's so particular about it being five, not six or seven. So kind of, kind of interesting. And... Um, so she's kind of into it, and I think there's a certain generation. And what kind of restaurant does she go to then? I mean, this is... Um, I can't remember the name. In fact, it's closed down now. So. <laughs> mm, we went there like five years back, and then once or twice since then. But just a fairly localised restaurant, nicely done, but focusing on the steak. And you, you see some of those around. We've mentioned yeah, like these kind of local. Well, that was, but this was a local one, right? This was a local one. I think the local ones tend to be... They kind of they they fall into two kind of general categories. One is a, a buffet style, mm-hmm. so they have a salad bar or something like that with lots of mayonnaise. Always mm-hmm. lots and lots of mayonnaise to put so on we there. We see that in the Ponderosa photograph. Ponderosa it? does it, but this is I think Ponderosa's a, a somewhat separate category. So mm-hmm. the, the local ones would have a just a very narrow selection on their on their buffet. They have the uh, cooking area, which usually if not always, is very near the entranceway yeah. or the walkway, the sidewalk. And right there is the uh, the fire, the iron, the, the grill. They put the steak just, right there. That fits with the video we've got just, just here, basically, where you can see as we walk in, right on the front there, you've got the, the guy cooking the right food. Right there in the front. Yeah. I think it's a man-woman kind of um, small restaurant, so the man's often cooking, the wife's serving. There's usually two or three younger, maybe students, maybe one might be the daughter, I'm not sure. Working, yeah. And then right as we go into the restaurant, mm-hmm. inside you've got that typical simple kind of service scape, just sitting around with the Tables, old chairs. That's yeah. just about it. That's right? it, yes. I mean, it's so typical, isn't yeah. it, what you can see yeah. here in the clip that we're looking at. And you sit down, and here we typically, you can get maybe a little bit of bread to start off with, um, which we've chosen. Some garlic, garlic That's it. on it and things like you that. You get yeah, that kind of it. option. And then, um, as we've got here, we've got a soup, and then you roll into the sort of steak dish, just like mm-hmm. we described. I mean, that's what you described early on that we were talking about. It's just what we're looking at here. Right. Those noodles, the egg. And yeah, on it's, the just, top it's the, the whole. It's the night market thing, just moved in, in inside, Absolutely. indoors. Very simple tables and chairs. Yeah. If you're if you're a little bit more special, to have a salad bar in the center or off to the side with a limited selection. That's just about it. But the same way, you get the wood with the iron plate in there. It comes off sizzling. Set down in front of you. That's right. And then the people bring it in. Usually, you just have your napkin. They hold a second because they know you want. Oh to yeah, the they hold up the napkin. I've done that yeah. in so long, right? <laughs> so they come up and hold up the napkin for you, and that's to stop it yeah. from. Uh, spitting on you that's from right, the, from the you've hot got the oil. shorts on or something like that yeah, and yeah, short yeah. pants on and yeah. so um, and as I say we see all that in the video and it was interesting you say it's just like the night market brought inside just because brought inside, yeah. that's just what my sister-in-law said to me oh really I said really but they've got one of those downstairs <laughs> I said yes it's just like the night market <laughs> and go to the night market without going to the night market how that, great yeah, yeah. That's, that's great so they, they love that we've been there a few times it, you know it's all those things it's convenient it's pretty good pretty tasty what about the price cheap you know you're talking uh, local I think we pay like about 150 for everything 150 NT so yes. about 5 five US dollars yes. 4 or 5 Five, six U.S. dollars. Yeah. Yes, it's moving up and down now yeah, because yeah. the old exchange rate. Yeah. So cheap and pretty good, pretty filling, 
and of course convenient. So. Well, there was a rumor around town a while. That was it. We're going back about 15 years, I think. There was a rumor that a lot of the uh, meat was imported horse meat. Ah, interesting. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I, it could be. I, I, it wasn't. Nobody was going there because of the quality of the steak. But that's like, yeah, I think at, at that point there wasn't much education about what steak is. And this has been the situation in China too. Even McDonald's has faced a problem in this: convincing people to eat the beef, yes. and that beef stands for something. And so, you know, this it may be natural to think, oh, everybody thinks beef is kind of your upper class kind of mm-hmm. thing you eat. But in Chinese culture, it just didn't exist as a concept. And so no one is thinking that way. Yeah, so no you one actually to, knows what it's like. Right, well, exactly. Yes. So you need to educate about that. I think another kind of format we see it developed maybe in the late 90s, uh, mid 96, 97 time you started getting more of these, with these really big steakhouses. Yes, yeah. And these would be much bigger than your regular s- restaurants. Mm-hmm. And they'd be a little bit more complicated. Mm-hmm. That is, that you would go and usually pay one price and you could go up to a window and choose what kind of steak you want. Mm-hmm. Or maybe even return multiple times choosing different steaks with these big salad bar selection and all you can eat kind of buffets. Mm-hmm. And they would be really huge places, really, really large. Sometimes it's of mass eating that we tend right. to see here, it's, which is kind of popular, isn't it? Yeah, it's very popular. And you can go there with big groups of people, you drive in with a bus of people. I mean we're talking seating for maybe two to three hundred, yes. right? And then they've expanded. They'll, they'll even have like Japanese sections. Mm-hmm. They'll have um, different kinds of uh, barbecue sections. So they have mm-hmm. all these sections, but steak is always there, and it's called a steak house. Yes, that's like the core theme. The core isn't theme, it? Yes, even though the steak actually now just makes up one piece of multiple locations inside there, it's still called steak house. Yeah. And Taichung mm-hmm. they call them the Taichung Steak House. And these things are huge, and they're a really good bargain. You get for about the same price, and you get mm-hmm. all you can eat. It's um, kind of gross, though, I have to say. <laughs> Every time I go there, I think it's a great deal, but after you sit there eating, and there's hundreds and hundreds of people all around rushing around getting all this food, you feel, oh, man, it's like cattle yourself. I think you, you feel the same way. I often find that sort of situation so exhausting because yeah. you've got so much noise going on, so much clamor it is. So zh, now, yeah, very intense. Very. In people love it. People love it. But people I think that it. you've had a kind of a, um, a mind shift a little bit. So you get these... You know, your low end mm-hmm. with your low quality steak. Mm-hmm. Then you get your steak houses with a little bit better, but still basically the same. Mm-hmm. Then you get your big places, which have different selection. But then I think there's been a lot of push maybe for a higher end. Yeah. And uh, Ponderosa is an example, an American company that came to Taiwan, mm-hmm. and they've done fairly well. I think we can look at some pictures I have here of Ponderosa. Right. Mm-hmm. And Ponderosa, I remember in the early 90s in Taiwan, was, was doing okay. Uh, it was mm-hmm. something different. People would go there. You Basically, you pay one price and you get one meal, one main dish, yeah. so like a steak. Okay. But then you have a salad bar and many other things to choose from, not just mm-hmm. salad, um, tacos and all these kinds of other things, yeah. sweets mm-hmm. and snacks, and ice cream, drinks, and you can eat as much as you want for that same price. And they have to look up ahead, price. Yes, right? yeah, right. But your your steak then, what, is still what just one. What are we talking about? I've I've not been actually, so uh, it must be eight hundred ahead, something like not that. Not that much. It's about five hundred. Depends on what you choose. So if you choose like a fillet, mm. a fillet mignon steak would be the highest one. Maybe I think around six hundred NT. So it's about uh, twenty dollars, a little bit less than twenty dollars, mm. and uh, that comes with the buffet all you can eat. And then the lower end stuff, like they have hamburger steak. Is just talking like ten bucks for that, right? So I think the prices are not that different than the U.S. prices actually. And I, I've been Honduras has been around the U.S. for quite a while, but they were quite successful for a while. Then they dropped off. Their business dropped off um, in the late '90s, and I don't quite know why. We went there. The food wasn't good. The service wasn't good. I just recently went back though, and I saw some big changes, and that really leads into what we're going to be talking about later, and that is this house steak kind of develops a different image. Mm. But then it can be localized. Mm. And if you can grab that local metaphor, that local feeling, Mm. you can really turn it into a big success. And that's what we talk a lot about on this show, right? We talk about this often, this localization. Mm. What Ponderosa has done differently lately is you go in, you choose the same thing, your steak, but now the salad bar, right next to it has a fake brick area. It's like a brick wall that we see in the photo. It's 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 paper mache, right? right? (laughs) It looks like a brick wall. Inside that brick wall, what are there? There are two 
little stands. One of those stands just they are exact duplicates of noodle stands on the street. Yeah. I mean, when you see it, and you say, where is this? If you got the shot right, people would say, well, you know, you would the vendors just walked off. Right. back right. in a minute. Right, you'd never guess. They, they, you know, they have the boiling water split off into four different parts, and you put your noodles in with a metal cup down there, boil your noodles, pull it out, and you get noodles. I went there with my kids. That's the first thing they want to, you know, they pick right up on that. That's the thing they want. And it has the regular West, Western buffet also, but that kind of added thing. Also, you sit down, something different happens. Immediately when you sit down, a waiter or waitress comes over and gives you a hot drink uh, yeah. and then fills it up over and over again, which has never happened before. Before, it was all up to you to do it yourself. And then they came around. They also give little prizes. They come to each table and say, hey, you choose a prize if you have kids. Uh -huh. They give you a little contest certificate if you don't have kids. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot more going on there. And I was kind of a little bit taken back. I, and the food was much better than it was before. And I thought, what's mm -hmm. going on? Well, what's really going on is a lot of competition in the market. Yeah, I, I think that's really interesting because the way that they're pushing there is on obviously the quality of the core product, right? And not only that, but then carefully thinking about the contact because within restaurant, within the service situation, mm -hmm. people, customer likes that personal touch, that little bit of contact. So I think they've been quite clever there the game, the participation part, they put right back in, they created that little bit of excitement. Yeah, it's not enough just to be Ponderosa imported anymore. It's not enough. Yeah. And the reason it's not enough is because the market itself has changed. There's a lot more knowledge about the steak now. And we have some new companies that have really taken off in the market. Yeah, and I think the one that obviously we're sort of moving to, because you're saying the market's becoming competitive, is this company called One Ping. And that's what we're going to major on in the whole series of shows. So, I mean, one pink story is kind of interesting because uh, Mr. Day, who's the chairman of the company, um, several years back, he he'd had a one failed business. It hadn't worked out. What too was good. his other business? It was um, a theme park. Ah, he started with a theme park oh. and. Uh, Got a group together. That was big in Taiwan for a while. Yeah. That's right, yes. Yeah. So it sort of made sense, and then it didn't work out. And um, in fact, he has a family business that's in the hat industry. And, oh. you know, like some of these other entrepreneurs, like Branson and like uh, the EasyJet guy, he sort of said, No, I'm, I'm not going to stay in the family sort of business. I'm going to move out, do my own thing. Yeah. He went to the entertainment business with one of these theme parks. So he had cash flow from family business already? Um, no, no. The theme park was pretty much self-funded, out of his out oh, really? friends and connections. Wow. It folded up. That, I think, was quite a dark, sort of troubled, troubled time. And then four or three uh, friends that were going to Taipei, mm. uh, networking, I guess, and they went to uh, dinner with one of these big magnets. I can't remember if it was the chairman of the Taiwan concrete uh, plant. And there they had a great steak. Up in Taipei. Up in Taipei. They so said, wow, there's some kind of steak, steak That's shop. That's right. They said, wow, you know, fantastic steak. And they, of course, they're discussing. They said, hey, this is our new business, basically. So they just came up with it. Then, th th that moment they said, hey, there's some mileage in this. Yeah. And Mr. Dai and uh, his three associates are sitting around talking about this further. And then they approached the chef in the restaurant and tried to tease him away. And Hire him right away. That's right. Said, hey, you know, we're, we're going to do business. But this guy was really loyal and he wouldn't come. So then they spent quite some time perfecting the recipe for this steak because it's not the traditional throw it on the griddle kind of steak. It's marinated in sauce and it has a sort of dry but quite unique kind of flavor. So they wanted to replicate that. So I think they spent a lot of hours in the kitchen. Working on the steak. Working on the steak, trying to get this core recipe right, basically. And then they opened one through to seven restaurants. So they okay. started in Taipei, Taizong, down in the south. These were called One Ping Steak? I, 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 at the time, I think they were called, I think they were branded as One Ping. So they started off fairly quickly. And, but Mr. Dai had that feeling, you know, I've got a restaurant going, I've got some steak in there but I haven't got what I want in terms of the service feeling going, in terms of the customer experience. So at that time they didn't have any special service emphasis? No particular service emphasis, but Mr. Dai got that feeling of what he wanted to do, mm. and what he was seeing in the stores was not what he wanted to happen. So this kind of evolves our story, basically, right from the idea of the 
um, being in the night market, very simple, basic state. Basic, yeah. Two, as you said, the Ponderosa idea of making it a little bit more sophisticated around the state product, to now people saying, well, we want a little bit more, you know, the state plus a nice service scape, we want the state plus some nice service, mm -hmm. and that was the environment that he was trying to create. So he knew from the beginning he wanted to, number one, make a core product. That's yes, that's state. right, a core state. And then, then adds on the service idea. That's right. Well, create an experience that was different, that was sophisticated, mm -hmm. that was cultured, that was elegant and smooth. Because his background is from uh, art. Mm -hmm. He's an oh. art oh, really? uh, graduate from Taida, from oh, Taiwan University. So he had that sense of, very strong sense of, ethic really in terms of beauty and, and smoothness and so he went out to recruit someone to help him do a lot of the HR, the human resource part and he had met someone from McDonald's and been very impressed, he was quite a senior manager in the McDonald's So he met a senior manager from McDonald's? That's right, well, a few years back he'd seen him do a presentation, was impressed, yeah. got yeah. the contact details yeah. as so often happens and then he sort of made contact and they started to talk more and realised that perhaps there was some synergy between them. Mm -hmm. He came on board and started to put a lot more procedure And at this time they still like got seven stores or something. That's right. Mm -hmm. But then as this uh, colleague joined the firm, he started to sort of proceduralise the service, mm -hmm. make it more consistent, create the sort of experience that they were That's the whole for. McDonald's thing. That's right. Well, it, uh, McDonald's in the sense that he took a lot of the thinking. Right. And you sometimes do have a sense of that overlay when you're in there, and I'm sure yeah. we'll see that as we yeah. go into the next shows. The, uh, so they adopt a kind of systematic approach. That was it. Right. And they designed systematically points of contact from the core, right through to when you get in the restaurant, to moving from the entrance of the restaurant to your table, what happens at the table. So they're so detailed. Right? Very, very detailed blueprinted it out, these are the steps, each step is described, they train their staff, very, very systematic. So what's the result? Well, we're going to see, of course, in our shows some of the results. Yeah, we're going to visit the Wamping uh, Empire. So we're going to visit all bits <laughs> of the empire, which is good, well, not quite all bits of it, because they've grown from their steak into the Taban Wu, which is like a Tebanyaki style uh, restaurant. Uh, kind of, yeah. It's, it's an interesting one. Yeah, so the Japanese. Basically, three biggies. Yeah. And what they think are three biggie market segments, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So the Wamping Steakhouse. The Men's Steak. And that's that's the high end, mm. right? And the uh, Taoban Wu, which is more of a kind of uh, Japanese motif, mm. that's the medium. Yeah, it's market. still, um, in terms of price range, they're still in the same mm -hmm. space, mm -hmm. though. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, we're going to Tasty, which is basically tasty a ste steaks. Steaks. Is yeah. it called Steaks? Tasty Steaks. Just Tasty. Just Tasty. Just tasty which is Their logo is everywhere. It just says Tasty. It just, it's big, red, tasty. And interesting there, because how did that evolve? Quite Chinese in the way it evolved. They'd actually saturated the local Taiwan market mm -hmm. with the steakhouse, with, with the Wamping, the wamping mm -hmm. Steak. And of course, they, they, they were facing a situation where it wasn't viable. One of the restaurants, several weren't viable in terms of revenue. So, you know, I guess in the West, we're pretty quick, quick to cut off that, to close it, it, fire it people. But very interesting because the reaction was, I don't want to fire anyone. Oh, really? So he kept it open just to keep everybody hired. So, yeah, let's not close it. <laughs> what can we do? Why don't we create a new brand? Uh, but we'll make it a step down so that it increases uh, footfall, basically. And that was the genesis of Tasty. So it, that was one element. It was to avoid mm, making staff have to leave. Making them so yeah. the you know, clear um, understanding of what one ping was about. They became the staff of Tasty. And of course, the other key dominant logic was the price point for Tasty was roughly 50% of the main one ping yeah. state brand. Mm -hmm. So suddenly put it into the market for people like students mm -hmm. at a special occasion, people will go there. So they're kind of quite clever in the way that, that evolves. So we'll see that too. Yeah, what we end up with is moving from a market where steak is kind of unusual, <coughs> low end, you go out to the night market, you get it, you maybe go to a steakhouse. So now you get this 
idea that it really is something special if you're going to Wamping and they have this um, I think they've really educated the market and everybody's aware of it. You know, I talked to my son, you know, have you been to Wamping? He's oh no no, it's too expensive. Everybody knows that's a, you know, like a really extreme down to the lower end, which is the tasty, which is, you know, everybody can afford. And again, emphasizing that educating the consumer about what the steak is. And so you move from a from one situation to a very different one. And that is through, I think, one thing taking advantage of being at, at the right time. And see, if they were earlier, it would have been really hard. Yes, it wouldn't have made sense in right, terms just of people's people willingness just can't, to play just like can't at a price it, point. Right? Not, that many, not that many outlets. You know, I mean, Ponderosa is you know, very limited. Right. Uh, that, that you could survive, but not this many. And they're talking here of a one being state, the top end, taking about a half million population, so one per half million. So one outlet per half million. That's it. So, you know, that's that's a fairly low density, yeah. basically, right. that kind of level of outlet. Right. But they've been incredibly successful. I see that uh, about three, four years back, uh, Accenture and uh, local group rank them top in terms of service nationally and just uh, a couple of months back they've been again awarded by the global uh, views magazine it's an international magazine they've had people like uh, Carly Fiorini in there so they've got a cute sense of what good service is about they were again they've just been ranked number one in Taiwan again for service so we're quite excited in this whole show to take a look at what yeah we're going to take a series right we're going to go to all three locations Okay, so that will be the next uh, three shows. Three shows, and we're going to start off, of course, with a real mouth-watering experience of going to the one thing first. One thing steak first in Shanghai. That's it. Taiwan in Taiwan. So it's and then tasty in Taiwan. Tasty. So these Taiwan, are going to be the three. These are the next three shows. Next three shows, and of course, we've got um, some photos as well from Tasty in uh, Shanghai as well. So a lot of variety. Really looking forward to it. Yep. Okay. See you next week. This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior.